believe that Thomas Clark wanted John Spellman to be the illustrator of his book because he had seen another book, and that is this book right here. At Home in the Hills, Glimpses of Harlan County, Kentucky through the media of the linoleum block and the woodcut by John A. Spellman III, printed at the Pine Mountain Print Shop, Pine Mountain, Kentucky. <clears throat> This book was a book that John Spellman published uh, when he was teaching art at the Pine Mountain Settlement School in far eastern Kentucky. Uh, he was there from 1937 to 1941, and it, he published this book in 1939. So this book would have just been published, and Thomas Clark must have seen this book, and he thought, that's the person I want to uh, illustrate my uh, my book on the Kentucky River. Uh, At Home in the Hills was um, a collection of linoleum block prints that John Spellman developed and created when he was uh, in the Pine Mountain School. Uh, he, tried, he went around in the neighboring area, in the rural area around Pine Mountain, and he, uh, he uh, did a lot of sketching and uh, um, and he created a 40 prints that he assembled into a book of shacks and sheds and fences and that kind of thing around Pine Mountain. And uh, it turns out that At Home in the Hills was uh, very well received. In fact, it was, uh, people uh, uh, reviewed it in newspapers in far distant places from Pine Mountain, uh, Kentucky. And um, so, between that home in the hills and then and its success, and then along comes a commission for John Spellman to illustrate a really prestigious book in the uh, Rivers of America series, was quite a quite a period in his life, and uh, and I I was looking at uh, the illus other illustrators for the uh, Rivers of America series, and he was in a pretty pretty good company. Uh, Andrew Wyeth was one of the first illustrators. And um, I also noticed recently that um, uh, A.Y. Jackson uh, illustrated one of the volumes, and he was uh, one of those group of seven uh, members that we all know about. Um, so this, I think this, the success of At Home in the Hills and the Kentucky River book really impelled uh, was a, the, led John Spellman into a life that he was devoted to art and especially to printmaking. Um, how do we get into looking at John Spellman? People have asked us this uh, quite often. And so um, this all started back in uh, 2014. Uh, we were going through my parents' house up on Maple Hill and. Uh, I, we were going through my mother's books and trying to figure out what to do with them. And um, I came across a thin paperback <coughs> called Appalachian Heritage, and it was winter 1983, so it was obviously a quarterly publication of some kind. And it uh, had a very striking uh, print on the, on the cover. And I, I I opened this thing up, and uh, I know I saw that it was um, that all the illustrations in the issue were by somebody named John Spellman, and um, I didn't <coughs> didn't really know John Spellman at all. I had a I had a sense I had heard that name somewhere, but that, that was about it. Um, and all the all the stuff in the in this uh, journal was related to Appalachia. All his all his illustrations, all the articles, all, everything in there was Appalachian. I thought, well, why in the world would my mom have this book? And so I read through the little introductory essay, and in the last paragraph, um, the, um, the writer said that John Spellman had died in Grand Marais, Minnesota in 1969. And so I thought, well, that must have something to do with it. Um, well, a couple of days after Finding this book, I was talking to our friend Keith Morris, um, uh, an accomplished artist in his own right, and uh, 
I asked Keith if he had ever heard the name John Spellman. And uh, Keith said, uh, well, yeah, he was my high school art teacher. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up talking about this oh, for a little bit. Brother, and, uh, and then it started to dawn on me where I had heard about, I heard that name, John Spellman. In the, in the early 1980s, I, I was on the board uh, for the Grand Wright Playhouse, along with some people who were in Swanson was on the board, and uh, Anne-Marie and uh, Cheryl Conklin Briggs was on the board, and a number of other people. And we used to go around and uh, meet monthly, and we met in the homes of different um, board members. And on one evening, uh, and I don't, I'm not sure about this, but I believe it was the home of Rolf and Gail Scrine. Gail was on the, uh, on the board. And on the living room wall, there was a print, um, a framed black and white print. And I was kind of interested in it. And I asked about it. And someone said, well, that was by John Spellman. And that he, he used to live in, here in Grand Marais. Um, well, there was somebody else at that meeting um, who was a member of the board. And that was Sharon Eliasson. And Sharon at the time said, Oh, I have a number of things by John Spellman. <laughs> so when I found this copy of Appalachian Heritage, I remembered that Sharon had said that 30 years ago. And, and so I called her up and uh, said, uh, I reminded her that this had happened and, and was this still true? And she said, well, yes, it is. I, and you're welcome to come down and, and have a look. So Tracy and I went down and went Sharon and Hank had place over on the East Bay and uh, to look at uh, these things. Well, it wasn't a few things. <laughs> it was hundreds of things and I'm not exaggerating. It was really hundreds of things. There were scores and scores of, of prints and uh, cards that were made from Spellman prints. There were pencil drawings, dozens of pencil drawings. There were watercolors. There was correspondence from by John Spellman. Um, there was a typescript of a novel he tried to write. Um, there were newspaper clippings about John Spellman. There were photographs of John from all periods of his life. And there were little artifacts like the sketchbooks he carried around in his pocket. And um, it was amazing. And uh, Sharon was kind enough to let us take all this stuff home and go through it. And while we were doing that, um, we started to think, well, wouldn't it be nice to put together a little exhibit so that other people could see this stuff? And um, here we are, seven years later. <laughs> uh, it has kind of come together here at the Heritage Post. Um, the book was um, kind of a second thought. Uh, you know, ex exhibits come and go, they're pretty ephemeral, they're up for a month or two and then they're gone. Um, so we thought that putting, producing a book that was related to the exhibit would be a way of kind of prolonging the exhibition's life and uh, uh, would be a way for people to have something to take home with them and if they wanted to, or, and also it would be a way of sharing John Spelt art with uh, people who wouldn't see the ex exhibition. Um, so uh, the book and the exhibit are pretty much related to each other. What's in the ex exhibition is largely what's in the book and vice versa. But there are a few uh, differences that I want to mention. One is that in the book there's a, an introductory essay of about 20 pages uh, that is not in the exhibition, and um, um, and in that uh, introductory essay, there are a number of images and illustrations that are not part of the exhibition. On the other hand, there are some things that are here in in the exhibit that are that are not included in the book, and I want to just mention a couple of them. One is here in the um, in this room, there are three linoleum blocks. Uh, that's been carved. And um, 
this leads to another story. Uh, uh, when we first started digging into uh, John Spellman, someone uh, mentioned to us that we should try to connect with Linda Zink because she might have some Spellman material. And uh, so uh, we got a hold of Linda and, and uh, it turns out that Linda and her then husband, Richard Humphrey, were very good friends of John Spellman's. And uh, at one point, John came to Linda and he gave her a handful of his blocks. And uh, so we were down visiting Linda at her home, uh, talking about Spellman stuff. And, and she suddenly disappeared for a couple minutes and she came back with a cardboard box. And here were these John Spellman blocks. They were the, I'd say about 10 of them. And uh, this was actually kind of a moving experience because <clears throat> after you've seen prints, to actually see the block that the thing was made with, the prints were made with, uh, I felt a, a real personal connection to John Spellman when I was handling those blocks that he had carved. Um, and it's fascinating when you've seen the prints to then see the block from which the print is made. And I get the same feeling when I go into Betsy Bowen's uh, gallery studio up the hill and I look up at that ceiling. Um, if you haven't done that, it's done your Betsy's gallery. Go look up at the ceiling between log joists and you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, okay. These blocks. Um, we're lucky to be able to see these three blocks that are in here because tragically almost all of the linoleum blocks and the woodcuts of, from Spelman's Minnesota years have been destroyed by fire. And um, so we're, we're really fortunate that we have these three that we can see. One of them is, is uh, illustrated in the book, and that's the, the block that for the uh, print of that beautiful view down to the east down Clearwater Lake, um, one of the iconic views of the Boundary Waters. Um, the other is a small little block uh, of an Appalachian cabin um, that's one of, I think, Spellman's earliest pieces, and this has been loaned uh, to the exhibit by uh, Don Eliason. And then there's this astonishing uh, uh, linoleum block of the Maple Hill Church uh, print uh, that has been loaned by Ruth Tice. Um, as I say, we're lucky we get to see these things because uh, most of his Minnesota things have been destroyed, but I, I'm happy to say that almost all of Spellman's uh, Appalachia uh, blocks have survived and they are at the Pine Mountain Settlement School uh, where he taught in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, they have linoleum blocks, wood cuts, copper plate etchings, metal plate engravings. Uh, and I would say there might be as many as 150 of them there. One thing we have not found is a single block from the, the Kentucky book. And they must have been astonishing blocks because that print, uh, that big print of the Palisades of the Kentucky River is a block that's about the size of the Maple Hill Church block. Um, but none of these have, have turned up. The other thing that I want to mention is something I'm really fond of, and this I just love John Spellman's pencil drawings. Um, Oh, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> uh, I love John Spellman's pencil drawings. Um, and uh, there are, in the book, I think we, we uh, put maybe a dozen of them, but we were able to squeeze a few extras into the exhibit here so that they are not included in the book. Um, there are, what are there, nine on each panel back there. Um, and then there are a few more scattered through the exhibit. Um, the, the thing about the pencil drawings is they, they differ from the prints because when John Spellman 
finished carving a block, he could create multiple copies of, of that image. And granted, uh, every print is somewhat unique, even though it's a close copy, because you, the block has to be inked again every time you take an impression. And so there might be slight variations in the, uh, in the prints. But on the whole, you were able to make copies of, uh, he could make copies. And, but um, the drawings are another matter because these have never been reproduced. And um, as far as I know, almost nobody has seen these things. Um, maybe a few family members, but when we made our uh, pilgrimage, Spillman pilgrimage to Kentucky back in 2016, uh, we, we went to the University of Kentucky uh, Special Collections Library to look at the Spellman material that had been given to the University of Kentucky by John's uh, sister Barbara a year after he died. And uh, we found out that none of the material has been cataloged or processed. They just brought three flat archival boxes and put them on our table in the reading room. And we just started looking through this stuff. And uh, it was a lot of material. And we guess there might have been 100 uh, John Spellman drawings in these boxes from uh, his Appalachian years. Um, and there are uh, quite a number of uh, drawings here in Grand Ray between uh, Sharon's collection and Don Eliason's uh, group of material groups of materials. And uh, it was hard to make a selection of these because we've got what 20, 20 of his drawings here in the show, and and there probably are at least 150 or uh, more that we had to choose from. The thing that I want to say is. When you're looking at these drawings, you're looking at the only copy there is. And uh, I think it's important to remember that. Now, the same thing is true of the watercolors. There's, that's, it's, that's one off. You don't make multiple copies. Uh, so there's, there's something special about the drawings for me. And uh, I, I always enjoyed looking at them. Um, one of the drawings is over here. Uh, this drawing of the Hedstrom uh, lumber camp. And this was an amazing artifact that came up. Uh, and I, there are these two pieces of masking tape on the corners. And I'm convinced John Spellman put those there because uh, I think he taped, he taped this drawing down on a surface as part of trying to create outlines that he could transfer to the linoleum block. And uh, so I, I know it's a little disconcerting to see those uh, things in the corner there, but those are historic pieces of masking tape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I uh, want to mention one thing that is not in either the ex exhibition or in the book, and that is uh, John at some point um, decided he would develop a line of Christmas cards. And um, they are, John, the prints in this room are John Spellman at the top of his game. They really are. And when you see these Christmas cards, you can hardly believe they were done by the same person. They just don't have any artistic snap to them. <laughs> uh, and so we decided to leave them out. Uh, but I mentioned them because I think he started doing this because he couldn't make any money uh, with selling his prints. And so he decided, oh, I'll try a line of Christmas cards and see if I can make some income from selling my art. And um, so it sort of goes back to the idea that while he was not quite 30 years old, he might have met, he might have been at the high point of his life making money at his art, and he never quite managed that here in uh, Cook County. Um, 
I didn't, I didn't, I never met John Spellman. Um, I, I moved to Grand Marais um, about 1978. He had died in 69, so he died about nine years before. But in talking to people who did know him, we have a, an idea of what he was like, some idea of what he was like. Um, he was obviously a big guy, and he had a big voice, and he made big dramatic gestures. Uh, he was not a reserved, taciturn Scandinavian. He was an expressive person. And um, I, I think of him as a very complicated individual. I think he had many levels and aspects to his, to his personality. Uh, and he must have been a really interesting person to be around. Um, well, I just want to close by saying a few thank yous. Um, I need to, um, I was going to thank the Ellen Boyd K. Johnson Foundation also, but uh, they get to thank twice now. <laughs> but uh, it was a Lloyd K. Uh, of, uh, a grant uh, from the Lloyd K. Johnson that made it possible to put the exhibit together and to get the book printed. Um, and we're, we, we really do appreciate uh, the support they gave us. Um, I want to uh, I want to thank publicly my wife Tracy, uh, who has been uh, a, an amazing part of this whole process for all these years about John Spellman. Um, I'm standing up here as a testament to the idea that you can collaborate with your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, I would not lightly recommend it. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we got very short with each other quite often during the whole process, and the waters got fairly choppy, but nothing sank the boat. And, uh, uh, and so I'm, I'm just going to say that I was going to use the word uh, because of Tracy's obsessive tendencies, but I'm not going to use that phrase. <laughs> I'm going to say because of her meticulous attention to detail uh, that uh, many all, all this stuff turned out better than it otherwise would have been, so <clears throat> thank you, my dear. <laughs> um, uh, I, I also want to uh, give my own thank you and acknowledgement. Katie Clark, um, who is acting many things for the Historical Society right now, but uh, Katie's uh, energy and uh, efforts and uh, uh, capabilities have been extremely valuable to us, and it's been wonderful to work with her over the last several months, and so thank you, Katie, very much. <laughs> I also want to thank the people from the community who've, who've loaned pieces to the show, um, who've been willing to leave blank spaces on their walls of their homes so that the rest of us can enjoy these things. And uh, you'll see their names on various labels uh, around the room. Uh, I want to thank Don Eliason uh, in particular because uh, quite a number of things were loaned by Don. Uh, several of the prints and uh, the linoleum block back there, but, but the Appalachian drawings that came from Don Elias and our, our real treasure. And, um, and then finally, uh, you know, John, John Spellman had, had uh, three sisters, uh, Marguerite, uh, who we really don't know much about. Uh, and then he had a sister named Barbara, who, um, whose married name became Barbara Allen, and she, lived over in southern Michigan, and she died fairly recently, I would guess two years ago maybe or something, and I think one of our big disappointments is that uh, we didn't get the book finished in time to give her a copy. I think she would have really enjoyed having one. Um, and then there was another sister named Ellen, uh, who became Ellen Eliason, uh, and she, for her adult life, was a member of the Grand Marais community. And uh, these two sisters, uh, Barbara and Ellen, must have realized and recognized early on that, that their brother 
John had an exceptional artistic talent. And so they just started saving everything. And uh, they saved everything they could that was by him and everything they could that was uh, about him. And uh, most of this material from his Appalachian years was donated by his sister Barbara to the University of Kentucky. And uh, the stuff that was accumulated by Ellen was related primarily to his Minnesota years. And she passed this down uh, through the fact to the family. And it has ended up in the care of Sharon Eliasson. And uh, Sharon has cared for this material and has added to it and has preserved it. And uh, now in a great gesture of generosity has made it all available for all of us to see. And so uh, we all owe a grand debt of gratitude to Sharon. Thanks so much. Sharon. So that's all I have to say. Uh, if anybody, I, do we should we take a few questions if there are any? Well, I was going to just have you do that. Actually. You were well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, well, if anybody has a question that they want to make make public, uh, they can do that. But of course, Tracy and I are both very willing to uh, entertain questions uh, in, informally as we look at things throughout the room. So if you want to corner one of us at any point, that's that's fine too. Jim. How did he connect to Grand Marais? Um, John Spellman uh, spent his summers uh, from the time he was a little toddler at, at a summer cabin up at Hopeland. And uh, so he got to know the Hopeland Grand Marais community as a little boy, and then as he got into his teen years also. Uh, but then after University of Minnesota, he went out to Appalachia and uh, spent a number of years out there. Um, and then for some reason, he left Pine Mountain Settlement School. It's not entirely clear what happened there, but he moved uh, back to Grand Marais and he moved here in 1942 and he lived the rest of his life here. Um, and he ended up getting a job teaching art at the Cook County High School in uh, 1960. And he taught there for the last 10 years of his life. And, uh, and that was really the legacy of the last 10 years of his life because we found uh, many pieces of art that he produced during that last decade. But he's, uh, he's uh, made a big impact on a lot of people as a teacher of art in the school. Um, so. Well, okay. Everybody, thanks for coming and uh, enjoy the show.